Xbox announced an AMD partnership yesterday, and today they spilled the beans. It was just yesterday that Xbox announced, uh, well, what did they announce? They announced this new AMD collaboration deal where AMD is going to be powering an entire new generation of Xbox experiences, and they announced handheld consoles and traditional consoles and that sort of stuff. There's a video that I did yesterday that you can go watch on that. However, today, AMD did their part, which honestly felt a little odd because I figured they probably would have launched both these videos in tandem, but maybe they wanted to spread the news over two different days, and that's exactly what they did. Anyways, Lisa Su, the CEO of over at AMD, put up a video, which you can now see on the display here, that uh, digs into a little bit more details than what Xbox has shared. And I think there's some like really important information here in this roughly 90 second long video that is absolutely pointing to the fact that the next generation console is gonna look very different. And I don't mean physically, but from like a technological perspective about how the console is going to work is going to change dramatically. So in uh, that video by Lisa, she talks about the over two decades of collaboration, starting with the Xbox 360 and the joint development of high-performance chips and the X and S. She also calls out the ROG Ally handheld for that collaborative experiences. But when they talk about the future of what is going to be happening, that is where things really get interesting. So to sort of summarize the video, they talk about expanded chip design, where AMD will not only create custom chips for consoles, but also develop a full roadmap of gaming-optimized chips using Ryzen and Radeon technology. They also call out backwards compatibility once your gamers can access their games across different platforms. There will be AI integration for future things. That is not all that surprising, right, for game development. They also talk about an open ecosystem, which it might, I don't know if that relates to the Steam information that we got yesterday, or I should say the multiple stores that Sarah Bond talked about yesterday. But these things are likely all going to be related in some capacity. At least that is that like that is what it actually sounds like. And so when you start to parse apart exactly what Lisa had said, I want to I want to read a quote here. She says, moving forward, AMD will go beyond. She said we will go beyond building custom chips for Xbox consoles to designing a full roadmap of gaming optimized chips, combining the power of Ryzen and Radeon for consoles, handhelds, PCs and the cloud. So we've been hearing a lot about how Xbox might not be just building a, a single console, a monolith console, and that is the Xbox experience, where it's more of like, hey, if you have a specific device, you're going to be able to run Xbox games. Now, the native Xbox experience has always been what is missing from that conversation, and even with the ROG Ally, those native games are what we're all like, hey, it's an Xbox, but like, it's not an Xbox. Here's like, it, like if you really watch this video and understand what they're talking about, it really sounds like what they are doing for the next generation is there's going to be a baseline Radeon and uh, Ryzen chipset that is like an Xbox that allows native games. And then from there, there will be a roadmap of where those chips will get better over time or there's higher performance or new options down the road that will maintain that compatibility. Basically meaning that if you want an Xbox, if you will, like the full like the full Xbox that you know and love today, you will be able to purchase one as long as it has the Radeon chipsets and the, the Ryzen chipsets that are defined by AMD and Xbox for this launch, then it will be compatible. And now somebody's gonna be saying, Yeah, Brad, but that's what we've expected. But here's the thing: other vendors I expect will be able to brand and buy these chipsets and build their own experiences, like Lenovo, Dell, Acer, Asus, these individual companies could then align to this roadmap and say like look as long as we use these chips from amd we know that xbox native games will be supported and then lisa goes on to say and we're doing it all with backwards compatibility so gamers can access their favorite titles across platform delivering on a promise to both gamers and developers i think that's the nail in the coffin here I think that is them saying like, look, these chipsets will enable the experiences and it makes a lot of sense because right, going back to Xbox 360, they have all been AMD chipsets. So AMD can do this. And I, I wanna say without emulation that there's that's a slight 
you know, deviation of the truth, but right, like they know the chipsets that need to be in the functionality in the chipsets that need to exist to allow this forward and backwards compatibility that we expect from Xbox. And by them calling it out specifically, I think it's just dumping more water into the bucket of like, hey, this is how the next generation console is going to arrive. And it's not just going to be a console. They even call it handhelds and everything else. And it's going to be, again, as long as AMD is building it, as long as it's using the specified chipsets that AMD is supplying, then it will be, you know, a classified in Xbox. So what does that actually mean? Well, that means that Intel and Nvidia won't be true Xboxes, if that makes sense. So like to get that little green sticker, which I would imagine will be somewhere on a laptop that says this is an Xbox or whatever, right? Remember that campaign? That's what it's going to be. You align to the AMD chipsets that they are building and there's a roadmap and there'll be successive chips. So like the single monolith console is dead, right? It's the one ship once, use it for seven years, that's dead. Now I'm not saying that games won't like, you know, move and, and grow in capacity and functionality and there will be different experiences, you know, primarily uh, visual fidelity, ray tracing and all that kind of stuff as you move upstream. But it's more of like the PC model. And let's be realistic here for just a second. The console generation died with this generation. It is already over. Like look how many games already target the PlayStation four or the xbox one those are right it's just a same similar chipset but better experience and so that i think is what amd is is saying here without saying it it's definitely worth watching this video because this is the partner that is going to enable all of these experiences going forward and they're already talking about not just one chip but multiple chips and a full roadmap so I think this narrative is starting to come together here from what Xbox announced yesterday and what AMD is talking about today. Now, we don't have a great release date or anything else like that. We're very much in like, and I'm, I said I was going to do this, so I'm going to do it at some point here, mapping the roadmap of the last generation announcements to how Microsoft is doing it this time around. And then we should probably be able to start to line up how these things are going to come to market and their availability. Now, we do fully expect that Xbox will be building a first party console like that is I think a given, but it's just going to align to a framework and, and be more of the, uh, it think surface, think Microsoft surface, right? Microsoft surface is a product that sells into an ecosystem. Xbox will have its, you know, it's premiere, if you want to call it that, but it's like it's core source. And then you'll be able to go buy something from Lenovo that maybe it's a little spec, a little higher. Maybe it's a little bit cheaper, but it's still an Xbox because again, it aligns to this chipset. So I think this is super interesting and I think it's very specifically being laid out this way. So one, so people start understanding like this is the path that's going forward. Microsoft, I fully expect will detail out how this is going to play out. Like they have to, right? They can't just keep shipping things and say like, oh, just go figure out where your games are. Because one of the one of the core challenges of what Microsoft is doing now, one of the most fundamental challenges right now is, right, they have this, this is an Xbox, right? But it, it, like the Logitech cloud or whatever, that G cloud thing, ah, it, it, this is an Xbox, my iPad's an Xbox, but it doesn't play the native game. So Microsoft is going to have to find a way to, to delineate what is a true, like plays your console games. And then what is a, a plays the Xbox play anywhere, Xbox cloud devices, right? How do they differentiate that you can get these titles uh, across this, the, the whole ecosystem for somebody coming new into the Xbox experience? It's super easy. They're primarily should be focused on somebody like myself who has a large digital library already and then want to make sure that I can play that on every single thing or more specifically whatever device I'd buy that goes underneath the uh the tv you know over there so super interesting stuff this is this is the hype cycle beginning this is them starting to tease out how these things are going to function i cannot wait to like i hope they start to detail this out more and i'm not expecting things like week back to back to back to back especially with the expected release time in the fall of 2026 so this is the start this is the start for us to start looking through the curtains and trying to understand that strategy so if you like that kind of stuff make sure to keep it subscribed here because then the be on this channel is me.